by the fall of 1932, mobster Joe Valachi was able to get on with his mafia life. He survived both the Castellamarese War and the purge of Salvatore Maranzano's faithful that followed. Now he was safely entrenched in the mafia family headed by Charles Lucky Luciano and his underboss Vito Genovese. Valachi ended up in a crew headed by Anthony Stralo, a.k.a. Tony Bender. In the book The Valachi Papers we learn that Joe received his first contract and his new role from Tony Bender in the autumn of 1932. The contract was handed down from Genovese to Bender who in turn gave it to Valachi. The victim was a 21-year-old hoodlum named Michael Regin, nicknamed Little Apples, who hung around a coffee shop on East 109th Street. Michael was the youngest of nine children including seven brothers, all of whom were criminals, and Genovese wanted him dead. According to Tony Bender, two of Michael's brothers had messed with Luciano and Genovese in the early days and were killed as a result. Now that they were top dogs, the mob kingpin and his underboss were afraid that the younger Regin might attempt to get revenge for his brothers and so, in a preemptive move, they wanted Little Apple's hit as a precaution. To assist him, Valachi called on his mob pals Petey Muggins and Johnny D to be the actual trigger men. To set the kid up, Valachi started frequenting the 109th Street coffee shop and eventually struck up a conversation with Regin. Over the course of several days, Valachi visited with Little Apples, developing a rapport with the young hoodlum. On November 25, 1932, four days before Michael's 22nd birthday, Valachi made his move. While chatting with Regin at the coffee shop, he suggested they walk over to a tenement over on 110th Street where a craps game was in progress. Little Apples agreed and the two men headed out. The dice game was a ruse. The only thing waiting for Little Apples was Petey Muggins and Johnny D. As they walked up to the building Valachi fell behind as Regin entered. Hiding inside were the gunmen who fired several shots into Regin's head. It was a successful hit. Valachi and his confederates got away and Luciano and Genovese didn't have to worry about Michael Little Apple's Regin avenging his brothers. But a look at the record shows that Luciano and Genovese were never worried about Little Apple's trying to avenge his brothers, by the simple fact that his brothers were still alive. All of them. Which begs the question. Why the hit? Perhaps Tony Bender didn't realize he wasn't telling the truth when he handed the contract over to Valachi. It could be that Genovese lied to him as well. Valachi probably didn't know it, but even though Little Apples hung out around East Harlem, he was actually from Lower Manhattan. His usual address was 125, Thompson Street. For some reason he wasn't comfortable in the old neighborhood. Why? Petey Muggins, one of those who put the fatal bullets into Regin's head was familiar with Thompson Street. It was there, he confided in Valachi, that on the previous March 16th, he participated in another murder on behalf of Vito Genovese. The victims were Gerard Vernatico and Luigi Lanza. Both men were crooks but they weren't killed for any underworld transgressions against Genovese. Vernatica's crime was that he was married to the woman that Vito coveted and wanted to marry. Lanza was probably in the wrong place at the wrong time. Each man had been bludgeoned and strangled to death with sash cords. Their bodies were found on the roof of 124, Thompson Street. Right across the street from where Little Apple's Regin lived. Genovese and Vernatico's widow were married twelve days later. Another curious address from Thompson Street was number 174. This was where Michael's older brother Lewis lived up until that spring. Called Fat Elevator, Lewis was part of a counterfeiting ring that was busted in early 1932. He was sent away in April. Interestingly just across the street at 175 Thompson was Vito Genovese's Manhattan residence. Like Louis Regin, Vito had been arrested for counterfeiting back in 1930. Even Little Apples was once arrested for the same thing back in 1928 but was released. Although none of Michael's brothers were killed before him, three would follow him to an early grave. The first of the brothers to go was James. 
About 13 years older than Michael, James was a career criminal with 11 arrests and 7 convictions. An arrest for narcotics took place in 1914 and he was placed in New York City's prison, known as the Tombs. Inside there was a special cell block designated for drug addicts and after Regin was incarcerated authorities noticed that the addicts were getting a steady supply of drugs from the inside. James's brother John came to visit him every day and after one visit a guard noticed that John walked out wearing black shoes, which struck him as odd because he entered wearing tan ones. When John arrived the following day, detectives took his shoes and found that both heels had been hollowed out and contained both heroin and cocaine. On each visit he would simply exchange shoes with his brother. John of course was arrested and joined James in prison. In 1926 James was sentenced to 15 years for robbery. He was serving this sentence when Michael was slain. After serving about eight years, James was paroled in December of 1934. Interestingly, he didn't return to the old neighborhood. Instead he moved to the Bronx. On May 23, 1935 James went to his sister's home in Lower Manhattan and asked his 12-year-old niece to take a walk with him. They went to a place and James sent his niece inside to ask for a guy. She was told the person wasn't there. They continued their walk and while passing an empty lot a man appeared from behind a sign. Sensing trouble, James pushed his niece away just as the man opened fire. Hit three times, James dropped to the street dead. Chances are, James knew he was on the spot and that's why he was staying in the Bronx. It's also probably why he had his niece with him, hoping a gunman wouldn't attempt anything while he had a child in tow. Five years later in April 1940, Louis Fat Elevator Regin was released from prison after serving eight years for counterfeiting. On August 26, he was walking with another brother, Joseph, in Little Italy when two men who had been following them opened fire. Five bullets found their mark in Louis and he dropped dead into the gutter. When questioned about the murder, a sister declared, It's a vendetta, somebody is out to kill us all. Oh God, who's going to be next? The next one to go was Brother Pasquale, aka Patsy Chip Chip. His violent death wasn't the result of mafia gunmen however, he was brought down by police bullets in 1950 following an armed robbery. So what did the Regin brothers do to deserve their fate? Did Little Apples have something to do with the Vernatico killing? Was Vito involved with Lewis's counterfeiting? Brothers James and John dabbled in drugs in their early years, did they cross Luciano? Why the brothers were killed may never be known, but one motive that can be crossed off the list is the one Tony Bender gave to Joe Valachi in the first place. If you would like to read about New York City gangsters bumped off during the Prohibition era, please check out my books. Links are in the description. If you would like to support the channel there is also a link for PayPal. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video please like and consider subscribing.